Alright guys, how's it going? This is part 2 of the cloth simulation tutorial. So this is going to address adding a weight map, doing a quick cloth sim over an object, then just using a wave modifier. So if I jump into weight paint, I'm going to add a new vertex group, so I'll come down to object data. I'll add in a vertex group and I'll call it weight 1. Then I'll simply just grab the gradient tool and from the bottom up I'll do something like this. Nothing too complicated. Then I'll add in another vertex group. Now this is just for an example but I'll call this weight 2. And I'll do the opposite direction with the gradient tool. I'll go this way. So something like that. And I'll jump back into object mode. So you're probably thinking, why didn't you just simulate the cloth with the skill already in the scene to begin with? And there's a few reasons for this. Mainly I wanted these folds. Now another method is you could actually use a modifier shrink ramp, but generally throws a couple of errors. Uh, it's not always perfect. So I'll add the skill into the scene and I'll put the link in the description below. So let me just go to import and I believe it's an OBJ. There it is there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly rotate the skull. So something like that. Now rather than scale down the skull, I'll actually scale up the cloth. Now scale plays a big factor in cloth simulations. And I'll actually rotate it. And I'll rotate it something like this. And I'll just move it up so it doesn't clip but it's just about to. Now this is where you might start to feel the pinch, pun intended. So first of all, we'll pretty much replicate what we've done in the first tutorial. I'll select the skull, I'll go to the physics tab and I'll click collision. Now I should really play around with the dampening somewhat, but we'll just leave things for default for the moment. Then I'll select my cloth that's already been simulated and I'll add cloth. Now it's going to freak out because I've been on frame 100. So I need to jump all the way back to frame 0. And what I'll do is I'll put the quality steps back up to 7. Should I play with the tension? Probably, because I don't want it to drop straight down. Now I could probably drop the mass down this time to 0 0.1. Now there's a good chance I'll get clipping on the jaw area. And this generally happens because there's not enough topology for the simulation to kick off. Uh, but we'll leave things at default. Do we put self collision on this time? Nah, this time we'll leave it off and we'll see what happens, okay? So we'll hit play. Now this might be a little bit longer than you usually get. And this is because we're essentially running a cloth over a cloth simulation. So I'll let this play through and I'll skip to the end. So I'm around frame 20 and I've already started to see the cloth mate having some errors. But I'm getting this nice shape and I quite like this shape. So same again, pretty much we're repeating the same process, I'll apply the cloth modifier and I'll just delete the skull right out of the scene. Now you can see here, getting the same problem. So let's select the mesh, I'll add the modifier, I'll do a subdivision surface. I'll hit apply and I'll jump back into sculpting and I'll fix these errors. So smoothing tool, we'll smooth this stuff out. Now you could be really pedantic and start using the sculpting tools and start pinching things out and kind of exaggerating the curves. But for a general sculpt, I'm quite happy with this. It's a little bit of pinching here we could maybe fix. Pretty good, that'll do. So I'll jump back into object mode. So we have something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the origin and I'm going to... Origin at 3D cursor, yeah that'll do. Then I'm going to rotate it so we can see what we're doing here. So something like that, that's pretty good. I quite like that. We've got a nice form here. Cloths flowing nicely. A little bit of pinching here that could maybe do with getting fixed. So this is getting down to the nitty gritty and answering the guy's reddit question. Jump into the modifier. Go to wave. Now you can see here there's going to be quite a lot of exaggeration in the face. And this is where the weight map actually comes into play. So you can see here vertex group and we'll use weight 1 
And that went from the bottom to the top. Now let's see what happens here. So you're getting this kind of nice flow. Let's see what happens when we reverse it. You're getting this. Now that's pretty much how you use weight maps to influence a wave modifier. Now you can apply this as a shape and tween in between the shapes. If you change the height, that'll influence it a little bit as well, and you'll get this. What if we add another modifier? Let's just go crazy. We'll add another wave modifier, and this time we'll swap the vertex group and we'll make this weight 1. We can get this elasticated look, and I can actually drop down the height. Now the whole reason I made this is because my kid asked me to do an animation for a Halloween project. I got roped into it. So what I've done is I created a path, I then made a path to follow and the thing just goes through the scene. So hopefully that's answered your question mate and Reddit. Do me a favour guys, like and subscribe the video. It helps the channel out. Obviously I'm trying to grow the channel as well. You know what to do. Peace.